Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Quiet Light Podcast. I'm Pat Yates, sitting in for Joe Valley. We had a great conversation coming to you today from James Tennant with Converge.today. I'll be honest, I don't know a whole lot about content and implementation, how to get that out there. So it's a fascinating discussion to understand for you people that are out there creating content in ways that you can get your, your content out to more people. I think that the the biggest thing that, that people don't realize sometimes is they think their engagement is much better than what it is. And this gives you an opportunity to sort of maybe even A-B test some of your content to understand the engagement it's getting or what it could get. It's exciting to hear all this today. And I think this conversation you're really, really going to love. So let's get to James right away. Hello, everyone. I'm with James Tennant today on the Quiet Light Podcast. How are you doing today, James? I'm doing very well, Pat. How are you? I am great. It's great to have you in this morning. I know we have a little bit of a time difference here, so I'm on morning. You're probably on afternoon, though. Uh, yeah, not too late into the afternoon, though. Just just after two. That's great. So why don't you tell us all about you and where you're from? Sure. So um, my name's James Tennant. I'm from the northeast of England, near Durham, if anyone is aware of any parts of the northeast of England. Uh, not too far from the Scottish border. Uh, my background is in content marketing and copyright, and I've been doing that for about 13 years now mainly as a, as a freelancer. Um, in the last few years, we set up a company called Converge, which is uh, designed to help businesses promote their content. Um, because of the 13 years that I had doing content strategies and content marketing for businesses, one of the biggest problems companies seem to have was not necessarily in the creation of content, more so actually getting people to read and engage with the content. So that's why Converge exists. And that's a little bit about my background. That's great. So I think you hit on a really good point, one that I want to make really important. Anyone can come up with marketing strategies, create assets, things like that. But if the rubber doesn't meet the road and consumers or whoever their target audience is don't re receive that information, it's sort of throwing good money at bad and good time at bad. So tell me a little bit about maybe what some of the few things that people should focus on when they're thinking about this. If they come in and work with Converge. What are the things they look at and the metrics you look at to make sure that content is being seen by their, their end users? Yeah, sure. Uh, the, the first thing they need to do is is fully understand what it is their audience is after. So before any type of marketing or promotion of the content, they actually need to be sure that what it is they're creating in the first place, that they're probably spending a lot of time and maybe quite a bit of money on as well, is actually worth promoting when they get to that stage. So understanding as much as you possibly can about your audience, the sort of content they're after, the channels that they tend to spend time on, the formats in which they prefer to consume their content, all of that is really worth digging as deep as you possibly can into to figure out. Then once you feel like you've produced something that you would, okay, this is answering questions, it's sharing a, a unique point of view, um, you know, it's a really high quality piece of thought leadership, or you know, it takes a, um, a spiky point of view as well, something that's maybe a little bit different that you'd like to get out into the world. Once you've got that, that's when you need to, to figure out how it is you're going to make sure that content gets in front of the right people. And that's where all that research will come in handy. You've, you've figured out already where it is that your audience hangs out online, what uh, digital publications they read, which um, tangible real life public publications they read, uh, which social media platforms are they hanging out on. And then you'll use that information to market that content, do the marketing part of content marketing, uh, to actually get the content in front of those people, to give it the best chance of being seen, first of all. And then if it's really good, Hopefully, it'll get engaged with. And then beyond that, you'll start to build up trust, authority in your brand among a new audience of, of the right people. Um, because it's no longer a case, and it hasn't been for some time, where just creating the content and create, um, creating amazing content is enough. There's way too much noise out there now. We have to spend more time promoting content than we currently are. That makes total sense. So, so James, let me let me ask you this. I, I like to come into these podcasts, even though I have a little bit of understanding of of your market and what Converge does. I like to come in like I know nothing, which is really easy for me to fake. Trust me. Um, but when I look at this, it's talking about the ability to read. Um, and I read this on a page, and I just kept reading it because it's sort of like I had to read it several times before I understood what it meant. It says Re reach significantly more of your target audience which is something I never really thought about. When you hit your target audience, some people just look at conversion rate and engagement and say, hey, I'm just glad I'm talking to people. But they don't deep dive into that. And what you're talking about here is the little things that are creeping out that you're not making money on when you're doing good content because you're not implementing it correct. Am I on the right page there? And maybe what starts that process? Is it the quality of the content or the quality of the channel they're putting it in? Or is it a multiple thing? 
It's, I think it's a multiple thing. Um, you know, it, you could, having said that, you know, an average piece of content that's well promoted is probably going to outperform an amazing piece of content that's that's poorly promoted. So it certainly helps that the the asset that you've created is 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 high quality in the first place because then when you are serving it to more of the right people it it has a higher chance of doing what it is you want it to do whether that's um you know uh, improve the trustworthiness between your potential consumers and your brand um build awareness of your brand or maybe it's sort of lower down the funnel type content that you actually want to maybe Get, uh, get someone to, to do something. So whether that's subscribe to a newsletter or download a podcast or, um, you know, a long-term become a customer, it helps that the asset that you've created is high quality. But without the promotion side of it, without finding out where it is your audience hangs out and how you can actually get that content in front of them continuously, wow. consistently, um, it doesn't really matter what you've created. Uh, so it is a bit of both, but having a very high quality piece of content in the first place will help in the same way that promoting your content effectively will also help as well. So tell us a little bit about, I mean, if people come in and I'm sure there's multiple layers and steps of things that have to be done. I'm sure when they come in, their content changes slightly, but tell me a little bit about how you've seen maybe some practical examples. Is there a company that you look at, you don't have to give the name that came in and all of a sudden realized they did a 180 switch in how they were doing things and it just started working for them. Is there a mentality that companies have that you you try to change a little bit to make that successful? So tell me about an example maybe of that. Yeah, uh, well, uh, to be honest, it's quite similar. The the uh, <clears throat> the reaction that you get and, and the, the change that needs to take place in a lot of different companies, it seems that the first thing that you need to do is communicate and educate possibly stakeholders. So if you're the employee, if you're the content marketer at your company and you're trying to persuade the powers above that you need to spend more time on this amplification or promotion side of things, rather than just create constantly creating assets, content assets, then the best thing you can do is to educate the people who sit above you that the more time you spend on amplification, the better the results are going to be from all the content that you've already produced. Um, it's it's less. It's, I guess that 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 piece of staying in constant communication with the people who sit above you, um, make sure that they they they're aware, right? Because they might not be a marketer, they might not understand content. That might be someone who's really good at running a business, but has hired you for a reason because you're the content marketer, and they don't really know what that means. But the more you can educate and stay in communication with them, and get them to understand why it is you actually need to spend more time producing content, uh, yeah. promoting content rather than producing content, um, the easier that sell is going to be in the long run when you actually want to make that switch. So that's the first thing is getting the stakeholders on side. And that comes through education and communication. The second thing is that we typically seem to see from businesses is that they are swamped with all the other tasks that they have to complete as part of their role as the marketer or content marketer, whether that's, you know, I have to create a certain number of content assets every week or every month, and I'm really up against it to even just do that. And I'm not just doing that. Maybe I'm managing the social media presence as well. So I've got to make sure that we're repurposing some of that content to uh, create tweets or LinkedIn updates. Um, sure. Maybe on top of that, they're they're putting on events or they're hosting a podcast or you know, the, the typical marketer or content marketer's job in, in the vast majority of companies that we seem to deal with is, to be honest, it's like a two-person job. <laughs> um, and it's often only one person that's doing it. So one of the big uh, complaints we hear is that they just don't have enough time left at the end of the month or the end of the day to actually be able to spend any time on content promotion. So one of the wow. best things that businesses can do is factor in the promotion and amplification of content into the overall strategy to begin with. So not to think of it as a, at the end of the week, oh, you know, we, we've got to promote that piece of content or at the end of the month, oh, I haven't, that that report we got out last week, we forgot to actually tell anyone about it. You know, we right. we haven't promoted it enough. Let's let's do that today. Let's spend 30 minutes doing that today. If it's, if it's ad hoc like that, if it's sort of just as and when you remember doing it, it's not going to be done consistently or continuously enough to actually have an impact. So the best thing to do is to 
bake it into the strategy when you're coming up with your overall content marketing strategy. And that way you're far more likely to do it. And that coupled with educating those above you um, will probably lead to being able to do it more often because you'll have more time and getting more support from above as well, because they'll understand why it is you're doing that in the first place. That makes total sense. So people that are content creators, let's say they they do that for maybe they have a network of four or five blogs or sites or content sites they they put information on. Do you feel like when when you just commented earlier on one thing that's really, really important to people that are creating content, it takes time. It's time consuming. So at yeah. the end of the day, the promotion stuff is something they don't that's sort of like just out there. Maybe they think, well, if I'm putting this on my content site, it's going to get engagement. But there's no guarantee that happens. So tell me a little bit about the process. Once someone brings it to you, where all it ends, it ends up getting posted and how that helps uh, the engagement for those people. Because I'm sure they'd be curious where all uh, this would this would go and how it would help. Yeah, so with Converge, um, the the platform exists uh, because we get so much feedback, or you know, with the report every end, and through my sort of anecdotal feedback that I got from thirteen years of dealing with with clients, Converge exists to help businesses that are maybe a little bit time poor, or maybe don't have the know how uh, when it comes to content promotion, actually ensure that that's being done continuously and consistently. Um, so what they can do is they can publish their content on our platform. And then through the various different ways we promote their content, some of it's automated with uh, syndication and promotion partners, the likes of uh, Google News, Bing News, Yahoo, uh, NewsNow UK, NewsNow USA. So content content syndication platforms that typically only pub, uh, partner with publishing platforms like Converge. They take the content that's published on our platform and they share it with their audience immediately. So there's an sort of automatic thing that happens there because of relationships that we've established um with our publication platform the second thing is we will take it and we'll use um our own social media channels and a network of social media channels that we have to get the content out to people who are using say twitter or facebook or linkedin to consume content as well and the way we uh, the way we choose those platforms and how we share that content is based almost entirely on the content itself. So when someone publishes a piece of content, let's say it's on, uh, we had <laughs> one that's from a construction and engineering company on different types of aggregate that are used in the creation of construction materials. So it's really niche. Um, so we use that content to find construction and engineering professionals. And we know that's the audience that this this company wants to reach so we find them on these various social media platforms and then we start serving the content to them whether that's through groups that exist on these platforms or uh, using specific hashtags that people search for when it comes to looking for content we'll do a lot of that work as well and that happens pretty much every day for every piece of content that goes on the platform so there's a huge time save there for a lot of businesses that might not have the time to begin with to actually do their promotion the final part of what we do isn't something that we can guarantee will happen, but we will find various sources of influence, whether that's people or publications, uh, media platforms or businesses that are looking for high quality curated content to share with their own networks. And we will serve the content that's published on Converge to relevant people in relevant industries and encourage them to share it with their networks as well. So, uh, that's a really important part of what people should be doing when it comes to their own content promotion. So we do that as well. As I said, we can't guarantee it because it's up to that person or that business at the end of the day if they they actually want to share it. But we'll do all the legwork to get it in front of them and encourage them to share it and make it as easy as possible for them to share it. So businesses that publish on our platform are not just reaching you know, uh, our audience. It's reaching um, sources of influence within their industry and their audiences. and then further afield, uh, the audiences of the likes of Google News, Bing News, Yahoo, NewsNow UK, NewsNow USA. So there's a there's a whole number of ways that we get the content out there. That's really amazing. So let's rewind to something you said early in, in that part, that you have relationships with people that help get the content out there. So is it fair to say that 
people that are creating content, trying to get it out there themselves, obviously that's a job in itself, just trying to get it out to people, trying to, to yeah. make your content uh, there. Is, is that really part of the real hook here is that people can become, have a larger scope because they can come in and work with it that they can't get a hold of those people? I, I didn't realize that was really um, something that would be that difficult. So tell us a little bit about how, you know, those relationships can expand people's businesses and content. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, b- building a network of of influential people within your industry to work with or partner with um, is is massively beneficial to anyone who's creating content. Um, in fact, there's a particular type of content that I encourage everybody to start creating as as often as they can, and that's collaborative content. So going out to people that are relevant in your industry and asking them to actually contribute to pieces of content that you're creating, whether that's video or, or, or blog or, or research papers, whatever it might be, because then what, what happens is often, um, and I'll quote, uh, you know, famous content marketer, Andy Crestadina here, you know, an ally in creation becomes an ally in promotion. So once you've actually produced that piece in collaboration with maybe some really influential people that you, that you're looking to either work with, or you want to access their audience, once that piece of content is created, the likelihood is they'll probably promote that as well. So you've already got immediate help when it comes to your content promotion. So it's you should find these people not just to, to get in touch with them to help you promote your content. You should find these people to actually help create the content in the first place. And I, you know this is a perfect point for me to state that using a platform like Converge, while we do exist to help businesses, we like to think of ourselves as, as a supplement supplemental tool it's not a replacement for content promotion that that company should be doing um we exist to make sure it happens every day continuously and consistently um, and we're there to make sure it definitely happens if it's a really busy period and you just don't see where there's going to be any time for you to be able to do it yourself but we always say across the site that businesses should be promoting their content themselves as well um, and not just relying on platforms or tools like converge to do it for them because it's it's when you do it yourself, it's when you build those relationships yourself that it, things can be become sort of your, your content promotion, your content creation can become way more powerful because you're building that network and you're collaborating with all these people that, as I said before, you either want to work with or you want to get access to their audience. Um, so I would 100% encourage anybody who's creating content to try and build that network out um, for both of those reasons. So what you're you're trying converge is complementary to, not in replacement of, to make sure all these clients understand that. And obviously, I think that maybe once you start working with you guys, it expands the network of people that they can work with. The, the great news is, is the content's going to continue to grow. So let me let me uh, pivot a little bit and kind of understand when you talk about assets. And maybe this doesn't matter as much. Maybe you can work with about anything. But are there kinds of content? that you all think will work better in most situations? Is it audio? Is it video? Is it just, you know, straight articles? What what are, what are the best kind of contents? Or is there a combination that you all like to see that tends to get the better engagement? Is is there one? Uh, so for us, the, the, the best type of content is advice or opinion content. So whether that comes in audio, video, or written format, if you're sharing advice, if you're answering questions, um, or if you're sharing a, a unique opinion on something, or, you know, um, it doesn't even, I guess, necessarily have to be unique all the time. It's just an opinion on, a, on a, maybe a hot topic or a, an, uh, something that's that's relevant to your audience. Those are the types of pieces of content that, that do very well. For our platform, um, we need some element of, of written content to promote. So if, it's, if there's a, a podcast or a piece of audio that comes with it, or a video that's fine as part of it, but we do need some written content to go around that to help promote it because that's often where we'll get quotes and we'll be able to share things out of that. And um, it's just a bit easier for us to do that rather than just share, say, you know, an embedded audio um, widget or or, or just, a, just a video. So we, we take a combination. We do take news articles as well. They perform uh, they, you know, they often perform quite well, but there's just a much shorter shelf life for, for news content. You know, it's typically out of date within, on average, two weeks to a month. It's usually out of date, whereas a piece of uh, advice or opinion on a topic could could be could stay relevant for years, and that means as long as that person is a member of Converge, we can be promoting it for that long. Um, so, yeah, we'll take 
news, advice, and opinion, but the stuff that performs the best by far is the advice or opinion. That's really good stuff. So I noticed when I was looking through the site that you don't have to have a brand new start stop, like you have to create brand new content to begin with you. You can go back and look at stuff that was published before that maybe got decent engagement or maybe one that didn't. So tell me about that. Is Are, are there times when things become relevant again that maybe you say, I'd like to recycle the assets I have versus creating new assets? Do a lot of people take that approach or just new creation? So I think one of the big problems um, that the businesses have is they think that because content fell flat in the past, they have to create new content. Uh, and then they end up in this cycle where they're just doing nothing but create, 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 uh, and they're never promoting it. And, you know, as I said before, these days, without promotion, the likelihood of content being seen, unless you've already got a massive audience, a hugely engaged audience or you know, you've really influential individual in your in your uh, industry, which, you know, for 99.9% .9 of us is just not the case, you have to promote your content. So certainly, you need to ditch the idea that just because the last piece of content didn't work, you have to go out and then create a new piece of content. The chances are most businesses have probably got a handful of pieces they've already created that are actually really good. Answer the you know, answer the questions people are uh, searching for they uh, share a really unique they share a unique opinion on something they um are just interesting reads that your audience would really engage with the problem is at the time you, you just probably didn't promote them you know nobody saw them um if it just went on your blog and you shared it once or twice on twitter or shared the, the odd link on linkedin you know you haven't really given that piece of content any chance at all of actually being seen you think about how quickly the feeds update on these social channels um, and how quick, how often the algorithms change on these social channels. If you're publishing a link just every so often about a piece of content, it's, it's just going to get buried and it's never going to get seen. Um, and organic traffic is, is really difficult to generate or organic results are really difficult to generate these days, these days, whether that's on social platforms or on um, search engines. So, to give yourself the best possible opportunity of getting your content seen, you have to promote it. And the chances are you probably already have a handful of pieces that you could look back at and go, you know what, actually, that that's a really good piece. That got a little bit of engagement. And it, it, we know it answers the questions. We know this is what our audience is looking for. Let's take that piece and let's take a handful of other pieces and spend a month or two actually promoting these rather than creating any new assets. And we'll see what happens. You know, Run an experiment. You can use platforms like Converge to do it but maybe run an experiment yourself as well. Take a couple of pieces and actually spend some time promoting them. And you'd probably be surprised at how much better the results are. That's really an incredible approach because it kind of gives you sort of a pseudo AB test where you've had it before and you've done that content on your own. And now you have a company like Converge that's going to go out there and promote it for you. You see the tangible results, which to me seems amazing because it doesn't cost you any money to create the content. It's already there. It's sort of a free roll to understand what you guys can do. Am I correct in that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take content that people have published before in the past. And and if you put it on the platform, we'll, we'll promote it. Uh, often one of the questions we get asked about that is um, it, it, the duplicate content issue that comes up, but I would encourage people to go search out what Google have actually said about the duplicate content issue. And it really isn't an issue. It's a, more of a myth -free. Um, if you're stealing content and stealing content at scale and sharing it, then you're probably going to get hit with a penalty. But one of the ways we mitigate that problem anyway, even though, as I said, it's not really a problem, is that we embed a canonical link within every article that's shared on the platform to tell search engines that we did not publish the content first um, and to actually index the original page that published the content first. So we do mitigate any issue that might arise from any duplicate content issue. Now, the reason I bring that up is just because that's a, a question we get asked frequently as to, can I share content that's already been shared on my platform? Yes, you can. There's, there's no problem. Uh, and we have a, a way of, 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 um, of solving a problem, even if there was one, I guess. That's great. Now, I noticed one thing on there. So some people that try to monetize some of this and have affiliate links and things like that, you cannot do that in this situation, correct? But is there, if someone has, let's say, an e-com driven uh, content site, they're trying to gain 
uh, you know, sales from and click throughs to be able to buy products. Tell me, is there a workaround or it's just simple? This needs to be straight content that doesn't have anything to do with, with e-com and, and purchases. So the reason we say no to affiliate content is we, we didn't have that in the past. Um, and people were sharing affiliate content on the platform. And we found that it was very low quality often um, and stuffed with links. Um, so the content really just existed. All the content around the links just existed simply to flesh out all of the links that were on the on the page. Um, so we just put a blanket no on purely affiliate uh, content. If for anyone that's sort of you know using the platform in the ways that would typically be used by someone who's got a content marketing strategy, i.e., that they're sharing content that is designed to you know generate brand awareness and build up trust and, and show people what it is you've got expertise in and the sorts of products that you sell or the services you offer. We're happy to accept that because every piece of content comes with a call to action at the bottom of it. It comes with a bit of blurb about the business around it. So you can absolutely share content that's designed to, to generate awareness about your, your services and your products. Um, but we just sort of say no to something that's purely been written just to sell content via affiliate links. Um, just because we want to keep the level of quality of the content on the platform at a, a relatively high. Not every piece of content is going to be a masterpiece. But because of the partnerships that we have, it has to be of a certain level. Otherwise, we, we won't, the, the content won't be shared on those other platforms. Um, it's part of the, the partnership agreement that we have with, with these other platforms that the content has to be of a certain standard, I guess. Um, so yes, if it's normal content that's just designed to build awareness, tell people who it is um, you are and what you what you've got expertise in. But no, if it's sort of you know top ten SaaS products of 2022, and it's just you know minimal content with just a link out for purely affiliate purposes. Gotcha. That makes total sense. So. Let me ask this. Let's say that someone is really new to content and they're not getting, you know, very good engagement. They come to you to try to change the trajectory on it. Um, when someone comes in, I mean, do you have uh, ability and referral partners and other people if they want to build assets? Let's say that they want to start from scratch and they just don't. James, I need you to show me how to do this, basically. Is that the right client or do they need to go and sort of learn that part and build the assets otherwise? Or can you give them something that's start to finish to be able to work through that situation? Um, so we do offer that as well. Um, if someone's coming completely fresh and just needs help, maybe they've they've tried it in the past, it hasn't worked, they're not too sure where to start uh, in terms of content creation, content strategy. We do offer that as well, not through Converge. It's um, it's more of a, if if someone pr approaches us, we'll, we'll do it as a, a sort of strategy session outside of the platform because the platform purely exists to promote the content that people have produced. So it's slightly aside from that. Um, but we have had businesses do that who we help them come up with a strategy, create the content, and then they use the platform as well to help promote that content afterwards. Uh, so th that is something that we do offer. If it's a piece of advice, I would say to if someone's looking to, you know, they, they've heard about this content marketing thing and they want to start doing it because they see all the great results that businesses are getting. The best piece of advice I can give is to spend as much time as possible in the early stages researching as much as possible your audience. So it's not what you want to write or what you care about writing about. It's what your audience is looking for in terms of content. So spend as much time as you possibly can. And you can use tools like Audience, that's with the SE on the end, or uh, SparkToro to get as much information about your audience as possible so that when you when you do actually come to creating content you know that the content you're creating is what your audiences want in the format they want it in um and and when they want it as well so that will give you the best possible start and from all that research that's how you create the best pieces of content that's really great. So you take a more methodical look at what the market's going to be, what the assets are going to be, and what they're trying to get out of it. So you don't spend a lot of time looking at, at channels that aren't going to work. It's a great approach to it. So one other question. So let's say that a, a client comes in, they start working with Converge, and they, they get these articles out there. How do they get the feedback? Do you have a system that shows the engagement? Do you have a way they can view how they're performing? What is the feedback that they get to understand exactly how 
you know, these, these campaigns are performing. Yeah. So um, on the site, they'll get, um, there's a dashboard area that they can access once they've logged in that gives them uh, views and uh, overall views and clicks. So you can see that per article or um, in total. So with sort of all of the assets that you've published on the platform added together, and we'll share that information um, in, a, in a graph, but also, as I say, individually per article. And you can see that by day, week, month, or year as well. So that does two things. One, it gives you an immediate idea of the additional um, promotion that Converge has generated for your content. But also, it will help you figure out what types of content are working best. So you can concentrate more on either promoting that type of content more often with Converge, or maybe even creating that content more often. So if you see a piece that's generated 10 times the views and engagement of another piece, it, it might be worth doing that more often. You know, um, So there's that feedback that we give. We also give a little bit of manual feedback as well. If we think we can offer a little bit of advice here and there about a piece of content, um, then we will. You know, um, when we're, there is a process to the platform, when someone uploads a piece of content, it does go through a, a small editing process just for us to make sure that it's you know, not, not saying anything inflammatory or um, it's not you know, of, a, of a certain quality that's maybe slightly below the standard that we would want, although we rarely have to deal with that as, a, as an issue. We will share a little bit of advice then as well. So, you know, this is how you could make this slightly more engaging for your audience. Have you thought about coming at this topic from this angle as well? So there's a little bit of uh, manual, you know, feedback from us on the piece of content, as well as the feedback you'll get from the platform in terms of how many views and clicks each article has generated for you. That makes a lot of sense. So, so tell me about this. When I look at this from like a quiet light angle, if we're looking at MA and and say that someone's building a content site to eventually exit in the next year or two or whatever it's going to be, obviously continuing this consistent content is going to grow their overall visitors sort of, you know, on a stack because each one is continuing to perform better. Have, do you feel like that investing this amount of time and effort in what you guys do is going to raise someone's valuation on their content site because of the amount of people that they're getting in? Has it made a significant difference in where people's business will be positioned in m and I don't know if, if you understand those tangible things once you're done with a client or once they're in there, but how can that impact them You know, when they want to exit eventually? Well, I guess from, from the, the basic standpoint of the the more people, so the more content you promote and the, the better the content that you promote, the more people that you're going to be able to um, reach because of that content. I guess from that, you, the more traffic that you'll eventually get back to your website, the more people that will become uh, engagers of your content or uh, possible customers as well. So I imagine all of the benefits that come from doing content marketing properly, increased awareness of who you are, um, more engagement on the content and uh, more customers further down the line. All of that, I'm assuming, is going to have an impact on the valuation of, of a company. Uh, I guess even from a potentially a, a data perspective, if you have more people downloading or accessing content and sharing their data with you, I believe that's probably quite a valuable asset to have, even aside from paying customers. So, yeah, it has a huge it has a huge um, benefit to any business that that's yeah. producing content because to be honest as you pointed out very early on in this in this chat if you're spending all the time and money to create content it's not actually generating any results then it's it's, it's wasted time and wasted money so uh, yeah the that, reason people, that makes a lot of sense and, yeah. and here's the, here's another question when someone comes in and works with you should they be going out and still you know putting that content out there themselves and if so you know i want to make sure how how do they avoid, for instance, contacting the same people? I mean, are, are there ways they understand exactly who you're contacting or who they should or shouldn't stay away from? How do they navigate that if they're doing it on their own too? So yes, they should be doing it on their own as well. Definitely. Um, you know, you learn a lot from doing this on your own. As I said, I, I fully understand. We, we hear from industry every year when we do the report that the biggest reason they don't promote their content enough is that they don't have time. So I fully get that for a lot of businesses out there, a lot of content marketers out there, this might just, it might be very difficult to find the time to do it. So Converge exists to help those businesses, but it also exists to help businesses that are doing the promotion. And our advice is always, yes, do it yourself. You can learn a lot from doing it yourself. You can build up a really powerful network doing it yourself. Um, in regards to how to avoid reaching the same people, I don't think that is an issue. I don't, I, I think that, the more, the, the more often you can 
get in touch with this, they'll reach the same people with your content, the more likely they are to actually engage with it. So, you know, if someone sees your content once, um, you know, it might be the wrong time that they saw it. They might have just been logging off. They might have been scrolling through. They might have been using LinkedIn to message somebody. They saw your content. I don't got enough time to read that now, but it looked interesting. If that's the only time they ever saw that, they'll never find it again. But if right. then they go back on and they see it again, oh, okay, that I remember that. I'll I'll click on it this time. I'll read it this time. So, you know, there'll be multiple touch points that someone might need before they actually engage with a piece of content. So I wouldn't worry too much about whether or not we've served it to that person than you do as well. The more often you can do that, probably the better it is for the performance of that content. And as well, the way, and again, I'm just talking specifically social media platforms here because we do see that that's the most popular way people promote their content online. The feeds are updated so quickly that if you share and we share, the chances are the, the right audience might only see one of those. So it again, there's no worry about, oh, well, they've seen that a couple of times. That's going to turn them off from clicking onto it. The chances are they're probably only going to see it once or twice, and they need to see it once or twice anyway to actually engage with the piece in the first place. So yes, do it yourself, 100%. Do it as often as you can. Get better at it. Um, and don't worry about reaching the same people that we reach. It's probably better if you do. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee, yeah, that's a good point. You know, I, I've learned so much from this today because I just haven't, you know, I don't understand the content side as well as far as posting, sell a lot of content companies. So I see it come in, you know, from the backside. And these are really, really good and, and, and valuable companies. So I guess just kind of sum this up. I mean, we put so many, so much information out here. If you were to give the, you know, the the 30-second pitch on what Converge can do for these, these content creators, what would that be if you compartmentalized it all? Yeah, sure. Um, Converge exists very simply. To, make, to help your content reach significantly more of your target audience. So we will take your content once it's published on our site and serve it to more of the right people every single day consistently. So if you're looking to get more people to read or engage with your content, you can put it on Converge and we guarantee that that will happen. That's really great. That's a great update. So let me, James, that was a great conversation. So let me ask you a couple more questions just for the fun of it today. So I like to ask a couple of questions that, that would be kind of fun. Is there, give us a book recommendation. What's one of the last books that you read that you would absolutely recommend to people? Are we talking uh, fiction or nonfiction? It's up to you. It can be either. Some people just like to relax and read. Some people want to have business driven reads. I don't know. What do you think? Well, that's a good question. I've read a few decent ones recently. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Uh, one I read very recently that I, that I really loved was uh, "How to Think Like a Roman Emperor." Um, it's a book on uh, the uh, Stoic philosophy, Stoicism. Okay. Um, I got quite into that uh, when I was at university. I did a, a degree in ancient history, um, and I learned about that then. And I've it's been a sort of a fairly big part of my life since then. And I just read that book. It's it's excellent. So if anyone's looking to learn a bit more about that philosophy, a uh, way of thinking on life, then I would fully recommend that book. It's very easy to get into. You don't need any prior knowledge beforehand. It, it was it was very well written. Great. And I guess final question, what would be a goal of yours in 2023 if you could achieve it? Personal, professional, whichever one it is. Uh, probably a bit of a bit of both personal and professional. Personal just for my satisfaction and professional because it would help the business. But um, we'd really love to, or I'd really love to be able to deliver uh, talks. Um, so I'm looking to do some in-person talks on this topic of content amplification uh, because we get these reports every year and the results that we get from them are really interesting. And I think industry would be, um, well, they, they, they prove it every year by the number of downloads that we get of the reports as people are interested in this topic. So I'd love to be able to uh, deliver this and have these types of conversations that we're having, but in a in a face-to-face -face environment. So yeah, being on That's stage amazing. at some point this year. I think there's a lot of people out there that would like to watch a webinar understanding exactly what they could do for it. And James, I really appreciate your time today coming on on the podcast. Likewise, you have an amazing business that helps a lot of people. And we're looking forward to talking to you in the future as well. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks a lot for your time, Pat. It's been a good chat.